I'll just go create, amplify shader function, name it. I guess I'll name it distance plant. As you can see, it opens automatically. This is the output. Let me just uh, go back to my shader so you can see what's going on. Okay. So this is our shader function. It's basically a reusable node network that you can use on any shader and you can use as many as you require. I'll just drag it into our canvas. And this is going to replace all of this. I'll just open the distance plan node. You can actually double click to go into your shader function, which is pretty cool. And now we have one output and that's okay. We only need an output for the clamp node. And we're going to create the nodes that we require for this effect. But instead of creating them manually, I'll just copy and paste them. Select all, copy and paste. Oh, you can also use the shortcut C to create a comment box. I guess I'll call this one distance blend, of course. I'll connect the clamp to the output node and compile. And that's it. That's all you need to do to create your own shader function. You can now use this on any shader. Let me just delete this. I'll connect our shader function to the alpha input and compile. You'll notice that all our values have been reset. This is actually expected and I'll show you how to resolve it. Let's double click our shader function and as you can see our previously set up properties have been reset. This is not a problem for most cases but for this specific example we'll want to control the actual values in the shader. So what we're going to do is right click and go into functions. I should point out that this category is specific to shader functions. So you will be able to see the existing shader functions in your project, but you won't be able to see the function input and output when working on your shader. I'll create two inputs. I'll delete the floats one input into the divide, and one to the exponent. I'll call this one transition distance, and I'll call this one transition falloff. I'll compile. Now when we go back to our shader, you'll see that we have two new inputs, one for the distance and one for the falloff. You don't necessarily need to build your shader function like this, but I wanted to show you how it works. You can also define additional outputs if you need them. You can actually just clone them. And if I compile, you'll see that you now have two outputs. It's entirely up to you how to use them. It's extremely flexible. Now that we have our transition distance and fall off, we can add new float properties. I'll just set them to properties, connect them. I won't name them this time, but you get the idea. And you can adjust them just as before. I'll show you another way to handle property values inside shader functions. Let's double click our shader function. Let's add a new float with the shortcut key one. Let's connect it to the divide and change its name to transition distance. Set it to property, compile, go back to our shader and compile. As you can see, shader function properties are visible in the actual material inspector. You can adjust them as necessary. You can also adjust their position in the material properties dropdown. Compile to update. And it updates instantly. It's very flexible. As I mentioned earlier, you can take this effect and apply it to any shader you create. That's the power of shader functions. Let me open another example and I'll show you what I mean. In this animated fire effect, which we have actually covered in another tutorial if you're interested in learning how it works, I'm going to blend in the fire based on the distance. So for that, I'll first add our previously created shader function. 
Let's go to functions, distance blend. You know what? Let's adjust this for consistency's sake. I'll remove the float. Add the transition distance again, compile, and go back to my shader. And it's back to normal. I'll want to add it to the mask, so I'm going to multiply it by the distance blend node. I'll just adjust the nodes to make some room for it. I'll add a new multiply node using the M key shortcut and left click. And I'll connect the mask. If I'm not mistaken, I think that the effect is going to be inverted, so we, we might need to do a few adjustments. I'll use the internal data available on the left tab instead of creating new floats to control them. Let's set it to something like 5 and 11, for example. Yeah, seems to be working now, but that's not quite what I wanted to build. I wanted the effect to fade out as we moved away from the shader ball. It's quite easy to adjust. All we need to do is invert this value. We'll use the one minus node. Let's drag and connect it to the existing wire. Compile. And the effect is now inverted. So as I move away from the shader ball, the fire is faded out. I hope that you enjoyed learning about distance-based blending effects. Be sure to also check our beginner tutorials for editor use and general workflow tips.